welcome to our presentation, particularly uh, during your lunch hour. Thank you so much. And you might have heard of Michelle Obama's speech yesterday covering some of these gender aspects. You have, you have been there? Yes? Great. So welcome to our presentation today, a topic that is so close to my heart. It resonates within all of us. Empowering women in technology and leadership. Presenters for today, my name is Ramya Ramuti. I work as a managing director of Salesforce Development at Teach for America, and these are my awesome team members. Shanti Anga Redri, director of Salesforce Development, and Chandana Janadala, director of Quality Assurance. To give you a slight context at what our company does, Teach for America is a national core of top college graduates and professionals who commit to teach in rural and urban communities and help solve the problems of educational inequity and poverty and thus become lifelong leaders in championing this movement. Our agenda for today, we are going to see why is this topic relevant today with some staggering current trends. Why is women empowerment so essential to us and some of the challenges we women face. And then Chandana is going to walk us through some of the initiatives we took at our organization level to overcome the typical challenges women face. And finally, Shanti is going to walk us through the cross-industry initiatives that inspired us, as well as some of the solutions at our team level, which helped us in developing a sustainable model for success. This is going to be our story, a story every woman can relate to. And I'm sure there will be more deja vu moments with more heads turning. Yes, I know exactly how it fails. Women in the workplace. So some of you here may be wondering, is this topic even relevant today? Why are we here? If you are here in this room, then we are among those chosen ones with access, basic rights to education, and among those lucky ones with access to technology. But some of the stats here may be surprising or even shocking to some of us, as I discovered myself when I, when I was going through these stats. And sadly, that is a problem, a real problem. Let's take a look at the stats. Women around the world uh, contribute to about two-thirds of the world's working hours. Yet, the income is just 10%. Surprised? 64% of the ad illiterate adults in the world are women, and 70% of the women are still getting only $1 per day. Hence, promoting gender equality became part of the Millennium Development Goals. With the aspiration of these goals in 2015, a new set of sustainable development goals was poised to guide countries through 2030, with the emphasis being laid on empowering women and girls through technology. How are we doing in the workplace then? McKinsey survey says that about we have like 46% representation from women at the entry level job, which is kind of still okay, but you can see how it drops at every management level, with we reaching about only 19% in C-suit positions. Half a century since for women forced open the boardroom doors, still our career trajectories look very different from men. What about promotions? They say, survey says that in an organization, for every 130 men getting promoted, only 100 women are getting promoted. And the Glassdoor survey says there is still a gender pay gap of 28.3%. The leadership gender gap is persistent and pervasive, but solvable. Time will not solve this leadership gender gap, but our action will. What about numbers in technology? The numbers in technology are even worse, and it seems to be going in the wrong direction. Let's take a look at the STEM and colleges. So the survey says that while 74% of the girls express their interest in STEM, but when it comes to taking computer science as their college major, only 0.3% of the girls turn up. This number is way too less. And you can see here how the trend declines. Back in 84, we had more than 38 percentage of representation. But it continues to decline. And as of 2012, we had only 22 to 24 percent of people in STEM. And how about in tech jobs? Oops. You can see a similar trend there, how the trend also declines there. And today, we have only 26 percent of 25 to 26 percent representation. 
This underrepresentation or the lack of women in technology is discouraging other women also from entering the field. And this underrepresentation overall is a key problem. Why do we think women empowerment is essential then? Because they are human beings. They deserve to enjoy the same rights and same burdens as men. Secondly, with time and again, we have proved that women has contributed a lot to the world. Women are at the heart of households and a nexus of food, water, and energy. So they not only know the challenges, but also the potential solutions. So they must be in the forefront of decision making in creating a better environment, a better life, and a stronger community. Gender empowerment is integral to economic success. Excluding more than 51 percentage is a bad economic strategy. It is good for business to draw on the creativity and recognize the purchasing power of women. Women brings in a different perspective, so it's good for both men and women to shift stereotypical ideas around gender roles. Just as a status quo is holding women when from back embracing leadership roles, it is holding men back from embracing caretaking and support roles. Sustainable development, it's good for families, whether they are going to rely on women as a sole breadwinner or they share a two-year income. And finally, having gender equality at the top benefits everyone. It's good for the country because the more diverse the pool is, the more talented our leaders are going to be. What about women who are already there at the top in this global connected world of work where everything is competitive and we need all the talent we can find? Half a dozen global studies conducted by the likes of Columbia University, Goldman Sachs, they have found that companies invested in women are more profitable, and particularly if they are invested in gender diversity, are 15% more likely to get financial returns. Analysis of more than 20,000 venture companies says that successful startups has twice as many women in senior leadership positions. And women have proved themselves in better crisis management. For example, in 2008 crisis, you might remember, there is a female-run asset management fund, Order Capital. They avoided their losses by avoiding debts, unlike other firms. And who else but women have better insight to other women's needs, which is very useful for improving or targeting your female customers to grow their revenues. For example, CJ Workers. They became the first female millennia by selling our products for women. So we have proved ourselves at the top. That is no lack of qualified women to fill leadership positions. Women earn the majority of undergraduate degrees. So what is it that then we are facing? Let's take a look at the challenges. For years, we women have played by the rules, held our heads down. We have been certain that with enough hard work, our natural talents would be recognized, rewarded. But we tend to undersell. Let me give you an example. So in our, in our organization recently, we had a vendor deploy an application for us. We had this knowledge transitional phase. And at the end of it, we were asking, like, had a survey of team members to express the percentage of the level of understanding. What was surprising about the result was men who would have been there barely three months in the project were able to express more than 70 percent However, women who would have been there right from the start of the project were able to express just a mere 30%. Why do we think so? We tend to underestimate ourselves. Let me give you another example. There was this um, social psychologist like in University of California, Santa Barbara. He held these studies asking men and women as to how they are going to perform at a variety of stars. His results show that men tend to overestimate their abilities and performance, whereas we women underestimate both of them. However, the performances did not differ in the quality. The, so what do you think is going on in our mind? What is it that something that we are lacking? The lack of, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. OK, let me just go here. Lack of, maybe this is not having self-confidence is the right thing. <laughs> so, anyway. 
<laughs> so lack of self confidence so the lack of confidence is actually well documented take the pension many women have in blaming themselves if there are failures whereas crediting others or any circumstances if there are success the shortage of female confidence is well documented i can give you another example in cornell where this math professor saw that when a particular program is like going tough women tend to say i knew i'm not good enough that's an internal attribution and it can be debilitating it can lead to a variety of those secondary and tertiary factors i'm not going to rely on this <laughs> moving on to career breaks like how many of us had to take a career break when our significant others gets a transfer we all have gone through it right society perceives success as a more key factor to men than women there is absolutely no space for career breaks in this race or in fact there is sometimes you don't even have those geographical mobility options right how about salary negotiations business studies says that men tend to negotiate four times as often as women do and when women do negotiate they ask for 30% less money and let's say if they are going to end up negotiating more they are more likely to be perceived as bossy what about maternity leaves So when a woman takes a break for maternity leave it's automatically assumed that her priorities lies elsewhere and they do not qualify for promotions we are right and you right have heard of this childbirth connection survey listening to mothers where new mothers and pregnant mothers speak out and the survey says that when women return to work maybe like months or weeks after giving birth they have seen that they face questions about their commitment to their jobs and thus have lost their pay hours promotions and even responsibilities upon returning to work good it worked so how about the double burden syndrome how many of us are working women here working mothers rather well so we all have gone through this cycle right like the mommy wars how do we lead both the high powered uh, healthy carrier, healthy families and a high powered career survey says that women are trapped in this cycle of guilt where they feel that they are being bad mothers for being at work or they are being bad employers when they give the priority to their children first household is still considered as a woman's domain definitely the contribution of men has increased the number of stay at home dads has doubled over the last 20 years but still why is there a societal perception that being a full time job is not a job for a man full time parent is right we are still surprised to see men in programs like mommy and me and ask questions to them so who takes care of your kids what about striving for perfection so hp did this uh, huler packard they did this survey as to why how do we get more women into top management position so they reviewed the personal records and they found that women tend to apply for promotions only only when they met 100% of the qualifications listed for the job whereas men were happy to apply if and if they met 60% of the qualifications women need these same kind of support like men do to succeed in their tech careers how many of you have gone through these challenges yourself well see we all have gone through it right like you're not alone we had them as well so i'm going to invite my colleague who is going to take us through some of the grassroots efforts we took at our company to equip women with leadership and technology at teach for america thank you uh, thank you ramya hi everyone i'm chandana now that ramya has established the issues at hand i would like to start off on how teach for america successfully endeavored to create an environment for all employees to flourish i will talk about the outreach and advocacy based initiatives and my colleague shravanti here will talk about the cultural philosophies at teach for america together these solutions have benefited our firm and its inclusion of diverse voices couple of those initiatives i would like to highlight here are first the women in tech initiative 
which showcases the work and passion of women in the technology industry by providing a platform to celebrate and encourage each other. Through this Women in Tech initiative, we had the opportunity to be part of many internal events and external advocacy work. And second, we have our organization-wide initiative, which takes a similar approach as the Women in Tech, but extends the benefits to all employees and even stakeholders outside the organization. So let me dive into the internal events and the opportunities that this Women in Tech initiative has provided us. We, as the women technologists, have these monthly meet and greet sessions where we engage ourselves in networking, mentoring, and career development opportunities. Through these monthly sessions, we celebrate our successes. It can be anything. It can be our promotions, or the accomplishments, or the impacts that we made. And we do have honest conversations about the challenges that we face in the workplace. Since this resource group is charged with amplifying women's voices to promote respect and gender equality in the workplace, we find this as the podium or the platform to voice our concerns to the senior leadership team. Recently, we uh, hosted Okay, recently we met with our CIO and HR teams to, be, uh, to do a thorough analysis on pay equity across title bands and roles. And we are happy to report that there's no gender pay gap at Teach for America. Another topic our community surfaced through. So another topic this community, the women in tech community surfaced through an org-wide survey is our maternity and parental leave policies. And again, our wonderful women in tech team in collaboration with our senior leadership and HR teams are currently benchmarking our benefits with other similar enterprise level nonprofits to make sure we are providing fair and equitable leave time. These are just a couple of examples of how our collective leadership as women in IT can raise awareness and bring attention to issues that are unique to most of us. Not only does our resource group raise awareness and provide a supportive community within Teach for America, but we also engage with fellow female technologists from other organizations. Recently, we hosted the Salesforce Women in Tech uh, user group and the Tri-State Women in Tech Meetup. And every year we attend the global marathon about women in engineering and technology. And these events has provided us exposure to other organizations and also women doing the same work that we are doing as part of this Women in Tech initiative. So not only does a resource group raise awareness and provide a supportive community within Teach for America, but we do partner or engage with other organizations like the Girls Who Code and the Grace Institute to make STEM careers more accessible to women and girls who might not be exposed to people like them in IT. And we also had the privilege to host the Power of You Teens organization, which helps foster a love of tech in girls and also provide them an opportunity to interact with tech professionals. Just to give you a context, Power of You Teens is a nonprofit organization which provides mentoring and empowerment for girls to become leaders in technology. It was a great fit for us given the work that we do as female technologists to support their mission. We had a full day of activities with the girls, like we had an all-women panel, a primer on networking, and an app-building workshop. At the end of the day, the girls presented the applications that they built on the Salesforce platform. It was both inspiring for them as it was for us. And finally, Teach for America's IT department is very passionate and supportive of any initiatives that promote technology to women and also our broader community outside of the Women in Tech resource group with opportunities to volunteer along with the other organizations. For example, the Hour of Code initiative introduced coding to our staff where a majority of our female associates participated in an hour-long coding workshop. 
Furthermore, Teach for America also partners with other nonprofit organizations like Pencil and Code Interactive, who actively impart computing and business skills to underrepresented youth, which helps them to kickstart their career in the technical world. Through these programs, Teach for America recruited summer interns into our IT department, and 60% of them are female. These initiatives have been a great experience for many of us, providing us with opportunities to enrich the lives of others. Now, Shravanti will talk about our Salesforce team and the philosophies that drive our success. Thank you. Thank you, Chandana. Good afternoon, everyone. And I'm Shravanti. Today, I will be covering our uh, core cultural uh, implementation. The first element of our philosophy is that everyone is a leader. The second is our focus on culture of learning and skill development. Finally, I'll discuss the emphasis on cross-functional collaboration, which is for professional growth. To start, we are going to discuss one of the most important parts of our culture, the expectation that everyone performs as a leader. In order to grow leadership skills in the team members, we have opted for project-based leadership over role-based. This way, everyone on the team will get a chance to lead multiple projects from inception to successful delivery. Not only do team members learn leadership skills that they will need as their career progresses, they will also gain a sense of ownership of the projects and outcomes. We also have a very diverse expertise in terms of technical and soft skills. We ensure that every junior member on the team is mentored and allowed to shadow experienced team members on their journey to becoming leaders. They should also be able to handle projects independently and efficiently. And it goes with our saying that we use our collective knowledge to build a better product and deliver for our business partners. The second cultural strength is our culture of learning. Culture of learning means our employees continuously learn, take risks, and celebrate failures along with the successes. One of the primary venues of knowledge sharing is embedded in our Agile process. As many amongst you are aware, Agile is a iterative project management methodology based on short and fast phases, or sprints. So we have a three-week sprint where, on a sprint planning day, we identify the opportunities for pay programming, design reviews, and code reviews. Our team regularly organizes the meeting to share the knowledge. Beyond any agile mandated meetings, we also organize regular team meetings to share any new learnings, including best practices or newer technologies. These steps ensure shared responsibility and knowledge acquisition by helping us learn, grow, and most importantly, avoid single points of failures. We also have a intra-group hackathons, more than twice annually, where we collaborate with our business partners to understand their pain points and explore new concepts and technologies and come up with a workable solutions. Some of the notable proof of concepts that we have implemented include streamlining search on the user interface, or Google visualizations, and mobile developments, amongst many others. Sorry. <laughs> Finally, we use the uh, pair programming as a way to socialize new skills amongst our peers. As an example, if someone on the team has used a newer technology like Lightning or Einstein Analytics or anything that Salesforce does, um, so they would be paid with another developer for the next upcoming project in the same technologies, which will ensure the expedited delivery of the project and the learning. As many of you are familiar, this broad level of people development has and knowledge sharing has strong impact on organizational resiliency. It prevents individuals from becoming bottlenecks while ensuring consistent quality and speed of delivery. The third pillar of our cultural strength is cross-functional team collaboration. For our company, Salesforce is a single source of truth for customer data. 
it requires us to sync Salesforce data with other systems in the organization. We are constantly presented with the opportunities to interact with other teams for various integration needs. And this has exposed Salesforce technology to our partnering teams. Their eagerness to learn this new technology has prompted us to provide necessary training and mentoring opportunities. Ultimately, this has enabled us to attract and acquire talent from other teams with a 70% conversion rate. Working with other teams has also given us the opportunity to gain and acquire new skills. New skills acquired include Java, JavaScript, Selenium, business objects, and so forth. This has helped us provide the most architecturally sound solutions and improve process efficiencies. This has, uh, for example, uh, one of our QA analysts was interested in streamlining testing for Salesforce. So we collaborated with her to set up a testing automation uh, using Selenium. This has not only improved our testing efficiencies and automated test coverage, this has also increased her organizational visibility. Finally, this cross-team collaboration has provided us with opportunities to meet with and gain mentors from, mentors from the leaders in the industry. So this has proven to be a source of several opportunities for professional growth and career advancement at Teach for America. That covers some of the main components of our culture that we identified as being important in creating an environment where our diverse group can flourish. Before we end our presentation, I would like to share some of the um, initiatives at other firms which also excel at recruiting and retaining female talent. And um, the, so the, the companies in particular I would like to share the success stories of Eli Lilly and Accenture. As we review, you'll note that there is a strong overlap between the initiatives at Teach for America and elsewhere, suggesting the common path to success. Do we have anyone from Eli Lilly here? Well, no, so we're going to learn about it. I guess they already attained the gender equality. <laughs> <laughs> so Eli Lilly began promoting uh, gender diversity long before the practice was common. They are, uh, in 1876, it hired its first female employee, and in 1927, the first female lab technician. Eli Lilly is very aggressive in looking for aggressive uh, in looking for diverse voices for leadership roles. It identifies the shining stars and provides the opportunity to groom their leadership skills. They also have the initiative called Global Lilly Women's Network, which offers speaker events and teleconference events by the female leaders at Lilly. This has helped many women in uh, leading successfully and exerting influence at the company. Due to these and many other factors, many women have been groomed and have risen up in the ranks. Currently, they have 29% board of directors as women. Our next example that we'll be talking about is Accenture. Anyone from Accenture? Awesome, this is great. I think Accenture doesn't need this talk. <laughs> uh, so, Accenture's organizational goal is to attain 50% uh, or uh, gender balance. So currently they are at 40% women and hope to reach 50% by 2025. Furthermore, 30% of the women are already in the leadership roles. So the way they achieve these targets are uh, they have, they track diversity goals for each of their business segments and geographies providing transparent progress updates. They offer outsized referral bonuses for women and underrepresented minority hires. They have a program where C-suite mentors sponsor senior women for career advancement. They also have several initiatives such as mentoring, training, networking, and work-life balance and goal setting that have 
helped empower women at several levels. Today, Accenture women stay longer and get promoted at higher rate than men. As we reach towards the end of our presentation, I would like to recap the solutions that you could take back to your organization for promoting diversity. We started our presentation by sharing some of the statistics highlighting the disparities uh, in, the, uh, in the outcomes of the workplace that women face at workplace, especially in tech. However, to remediate these issues, we shared our best practices that help cultivate female leadership and professional growth at Teach for America and elsewhere, and other institutions as well. So those include having a specialized resource group, such as Women in Tech, to provide the nexus of support and organization. Networking opportunities are key to identifying and linking driven people so that our organizations can best use the talent pool. Prioritizing uh, cultural changes such as prioritizing learning in the collaborative environments helps build organizational resilience. Finally, developing and tracking diversity metrics while keeping an open channel of uh, communication with the senior leadership will ensure our focus remain on the goal. Furthermore, these are in the solutions that worked in the limited instances. Other companies, as mentioned earlier, employed the same strategies which yielded similar success. I would like to close the presentation with the following quote on the next slide. There's a Wonder Woman inside every one of us. Let's unleash her this year to better support and empower one another. Before. Uh, this is our team, um, the Salesforce team. So before we end, uh, open the floor for questions, we would like to thank the online resources that helped us provide you with the useful information and insights and infographics. Um, hope you enjoyed our talk, and uh, we are ready for questions, if you have any. No questions? Otherwise, we'll be here. OK, great. I have a question, um, and to be fair, this is kind of more of a question for the audience than necessarily for you, but I wanted to take this opportunity. Um, I would love to hear from anybody at a smallish company without a lot of resources to dedicate an entire team or an entire HR team, um, that if you've put together some kind of committee, cross-functional, cross-department committee of people who care about this stuff and other equality initiatives, other underrepresented minorities in your company, implementing smart, progressive HR policies as a group coming together where you don't have necessarily dedicated HR, literal, functional humans in that job role. Um, I just wanna put that out there. I'm really interested in bringing this to our company, which is a small company of like, we're like less than 100 people. Um, I would love to hear inspiring stories from people of how you've kind of got, gotten something off the ground from nothing. So, thanks everyone. <laughs> Yeah, please reach out to her if you have any suggestions. Uh, I guess no other questions. They'll be standing here if you have any questions. I guess I'm repeating. OK, go ahead. Um, my question, uh, we have a, like a women's leadership group in our company. Um, and I don't know, I, I think, I feel like they don't have the same kinds of uh, focuses that you all do. And in fact, like their last two speakers were men, which I found <laughs> yeah. very confusing. Um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to give them feedback and say like this is not this is not helping. Like, what's a, do you have a suggestions on how to give feedback to them? If that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I think the first and uh, foremost important thing is you have to initiate the conversation about the problems that you are facing firsthand. And the more power you gain with other women and see if you can gather the uh, support of the other women leaders in the organization and also support from the men. Because we need support from the men, um, like Michelle Obama, that they were saying that men sitting and deciding for us is not going to work. 
So they need to come and work with us. So the only way is to speak up, voice, raise your voices, and open up until they hear you out. And at one point, they will. But you have to provide all the facts and statistics. Maybe that might be other uh, uh, you know, point where you can get started. Yeah. Is that yeah. useful? Like what, what, her, what she says, I support that. Like, Whenever we, we had the same challenges as well as to how to take it forward to the HR policies, or everybody struggles in the kind of giving feedback, right? Like phrases, we can do it in open criticism, only in open closed doors, so that's what everybody does. But in terms of gaining that support, definitely there will be like minded people like you over there, and also like it doesn't matter, it doesn't have a gender disparity there. Like men and women who are supporting all this should be there. Main thing is not to hold back. You have to take the first step. At any point of time, you have to do it, right? So that's why I was saying, like, time will not solve it. So we have to take the first step, definitely. But gaining that kind of a support from people is very important. And quantifying your problems, like, why do you think it is essential? Why do you think it's going to make an impact on that? Mm -hmm. Those quantities, because anytime, anywhere you go and ask or you tell them, OK, why do you want to do it? That, that's the first question they give us, right? So maybe preparing ourselves is very important, and then presenting. That, that would be your first step, like you take it. And then yeah, from there we will take it. Definitely there will be challenges, definitely there will be asking a lot of questions, but, yeah. but that, taking that first step is definitely an important thing. Yeah. Great, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi, do you guys have any um, tips or any suggestions on how to write job qualifications or job requirements that encourage women to apply for tech jobs? a great question. <laughs> Everybody is struggling. So um, one of the things that we are doing currently in our company is so actively uh, any, any technology that we have, let's say, be it Salesforce or be anything, we have active workshops that are going on in our uh, program. Uh, we also encourage like women to bring, bring their kids to uh, our places, the one hour of code and all that, what she was talking. So that is one way, like from our level, we are introducing, like we are part of like the New York City Salesforce group. We are hosting it in our company itself. So it encourages other people, right, like people from business also to know about what is going on in technology. So from our levels, not only just inside our team, like within cross-functional teams, we are like kind of promoting, promoting Salesforce everywhere. And, and also other technology, we get a chance to learn about other technology. So that is one definitely we are doing in IT level, technology level. And other than that, also to business teams, we are like kind of having all these workshops and partnering with other teams, some of the examples that she was saying. And other than that, we have main thing is the girls, right? Like the stats definitely say the area where we have to concentrate is STEM for girls. Because girls do express their interest in STEM. They wanted to do it. But somehow, when it comes to taking that college major, there's a very staggering uh, decline, if you see. Only 0.3% girls turn up. Why is that? Is it like kind of said, like, OK, only boys for engineering? I don't know if that is a stereotypical idea like that. or so. It is very essential to concentrate on girls and then kind of like, th that's why these kind of bring your kids to work doesn't mean that just like, yeah, they'll be that kind. But we are promoting these also that the message is going across to the girls. So that is some area where we are tackling kind of like imparting, uh, having all these technical workshops that we have for them kind of helps them. They, they really wanted to and particularly they see their mommies working. So that might inspire them as well. Uh, those are some of the areas I could think of. And also, the most important thing that we found in the survey is women like purpose. So if you can show that through tech, they can solve problems, they are serving the community. Yes, it is, uh, you know, if you are like a programmer, you know, any of, any one of you are programmers, right? So, yes. So you sit behind the desk and work, but then you are providing a value to the organization. I think one of the most important driving factor for women to retain or you know, get encouraged is provide the environment culturally. That's very important. Have the environment where they can flourish. Most of the companies, uh, S&P, 44% of them does not have any women directors, even though the, you know, the number of employees are more. I think Environment is one thing, purpose is second thing, and then grassroots level efforts and encourage women to come. It's okay to fail, it's okay to step up and learn, it's okay. So it should be encouraged, and that's the way. You know, it, it might take some time because we just started the initiatives in US especially. Uh, yeah. Does it address your question? <laughs> <laughs> we went on all the routes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh.
thank you, everyone. Thank you. Great to have you. Thank you. Thank you.